Hello and welcome to the Absolute State of Science Part 1. I'm your host. In this episode, we're going to talk about paradigms, paradigm shifts, and how they've occurred throughout history. It's going to be pretty cool. Part 0, which is sort of a precursor episode, exists, so you should check that out. Our current paradigm is general relativity. So general relativity describes gravity not as a force, as the physicist Isaac Newton thought of it, but rather as a curvature of space and time. So general relativity is the paradigm that every educated person has been holding for the past hundred years, which is quite a long time. But if you think about it, a hundred years is almost nothing in the grand scheme of at least recorded human history. So let's actually look at a timeline of all of recorded history here. So we have the geocentric model, which says the Earth is the center of the universe. We have the heliocentric model presented by Copernicus that says that the Sun is the center of the universe. And then of course the egocentric model presented by Galileo. So from the year 100 AD, all the way until the year 1500 something, People believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. People believed in the geocentric paradigm. And they thought that way all the way up until a guy named Nicholas Copernicus came along. He looked at the geocentric model, and he looked at it and was like, yeah, that's kind of a mess. You know, I'm not sure that that's right, guys. Here's actually a portrait of Nicholas Copernicus. So everyone, every educated person at the time, People, all the scientists, sort of looked at him and said, Okay, Copernicus, how can something that we know to be true and right possibly be wrong because it's been right for a thousand years? Okay, Copernicus, we know that you're a little slow, so we're just going to summarize all the scientific data that we have, and we're going to paint a nice, simple picture. As we've collected data over the years, they've formed a picture of a duck. And the bill of the duck is the sun rising and setting. So because the sun sets and rises, that means we are at the center of the universe. Here we go, we have a head. A head is all the planets rotating around us because we're the center of the universe. And if you look at this, how can you possibly argue that this is not a picture of a duck? So Copernicus looks at all the evidence and he looks at the data and he says, wait a second, that's, that's not a duck, that's a rabbit, guys. So Copernicus came up with heliocentrism, meaning, hey, I think the sun might be at the center. If it is, look at all these, look at how simple this is. In comparison to your geocentrism, look at all this complicated mess versus this. So paradigm shifts are actually pretty rare, and the heliocentric model paradigm shift was really, to my knowledge, the first major, major paradigm shift that took place. And then we had another major, major paradigm shift in how we looked at space, when we adopted Albert Einstein and his general theory of relativity. So every living person at this point has been holding the general relativity paradigm. And I think that maybe 2018 is the year of a paradigm shift for everyone. And do you think it's possible? Maybe, perhaps, <laughs> Maybe the new paradigm is that the Earth has been flat all along? No? Because that's idiotic? Could you imagine if I actually just did this whole presentation on that? God. No. I don't believe in flat Earth or support flat Earth. Anyway, why do I think we are on the cusp of a paradigm shift? Even though we have theoretical physicists in articles for live science that are saying, there isn't a shred of evidence that there's anything wrong with the theory of general relativity. And so again, just like geocentrism, how can something we know to be true and right be wrong? Well, let's just look at some of these articles. Let's look at this article right here. So dark matter. Let's just read this right here. Galaxies in our universe seem to be achieving an impossible feat. They are rotating with such speed that gravity generated by their observable matter could not possibly hold them together. They should have torn themselves apart long ago. The same is true of galaxies in clusters. 
All right, let's let's revisit this first this first sentence. Galaxies in our universe seem to be achieving an impossible feat. Galaxies in our universe seem to be achieving an impossible feat. You're describing nature as impossible. Uh, see, that's a bit of a problem because nature doesn't actually obey the laws of man, which is the equivalent of walking outside, seeing a bush growing and saying, that is impossible. That's not what you do. That's not how nature, that's not science. You don't get to do that. Well, matter of fact, I've actually consulted the scientific method and uh, it doesn't say anywhere on it, tell nature that it's impossible. Like, and you just got, you, you guys, the scientific community just does this all the time. We look in space and they go, impossible, defies the laws of physics, it shouldn't exist. Then your theories are wrong. Nature is not wrong. Pulsar picked up by the authorities for defying the law of physics. Wait a second. What what's actually what is the punishment for something that breaks the law? How do we enforce that? We can't because we can't tell nature. Hey, uh, Pulsar, when we get our shit together as a human race, we are gonna totally arrest you for disobeying the laws of physics. General relativity doesn't properly predict the motion of stars, galaxies, planets, all that. And if it doesn't predict them successfully, what does that mean? Well. What that means is that this is the end of part one. Thank you so much for watching. Part zero is already out, so you can go check that out. I talk about how Albert Einstein got started and his first experiment and all sorts of fun stuff. Part two is also out, and that's where we talk about black holes and why they are really, really silly.